Hello, my name is Kurt Baker. I'm part of the Mudhole teaching staff here. Um, what I'd like to show you now is how to do a inlay bands. Uh, going to go through a couple of different variations of inlay bands. Uh, stuff that you're going to need for those uh, inlay bands is a burnishing tool. Uh, scissors are optional, razor blade, uh, and some thread. So right here, I've got my thread on my wrapper here. I'm going to thread it through here and get it ready to wrap. And usually the one that I want to do today is, is one that you're going to add in. Uh, the nail knot is a little different story. So I'm going to get my thread started on here. Just like, just like you would any other day, you're just going to go around your three times. Going to lift my thread up over. Then I'm going to hold my tag to that side and just kind of wrap over it. You want to make sure that your tag stays to that side as you're wrapping. Get it running true, come back in, straighten up. And I'll cut this tag off of here. So here's the thing, we're gonna, I'm gonna use a real bright thread here so it's easily seen. Um, you know how you would put our pull string in for our guide when we finish a guide or any time we're wrapping thread, we put a pull string in? We're gonna do something similar. We're gonna get a piece of thread. Uh, it doesn't have to be super long. This one's about uh, 13, 14 inches. I'm gonna take the short end and put it underneath my thread and I'm locking it under and locking it on. I'm gonna go around three times. I'm going to come back around until it touches right here. I'm going to unwind the thread that we just put on or insert it in. I'm going to do a half hitch, come behind this thread here. So when I'm doing this, I'm actually pushing this thread to my right. And then I'm following the, the thread around the blank, on the blank itself, around to the other side. And then when I want to finish it, I just tuck it up under and then go on around. And that'll give me a single trim band. Nice, clean. Uh, if you use A thread, the little bump here where you start isn't quite as noticeable. Uh, if you want to do multiples, like push, like push this out maybe three or four, do the same thing. Just leave that thread in there, just half hitch it back in there, and just go three or four. And I'm just pushing that thread over as I go, come down, and now I've got a wider band. Take your burnishing tool, just kind of keep everything running true. Okay, so that's one method. The second method is a spiral method. So we've, we've locked this thread in like that. So now I can take this thread and pull it up underneath here, back to there, and I can literally run this other thread next to it and spiral it around. And if you go past where you started, Here's where I started. If I go past that here, lock it up under, and now go around a couple of times, come back in, straighten this back up now. Now I wanna grab this thread. I wanna pull this to where this and this one are at the same spot. It's a little tricky because you can go too far really fast, right about there. So now I have two threads and two threads all the way around. Spiraled together, it looks pretty good. Then there's a lot of things called, like out there called the olive branch. Um, it's pretty simple if you, if you know how to do it, it, it kind of works out pretty easily. It's basically it's the same thing. We're just inserting a thread in here. I'm gonna wrap over it at least three times to kind of lock it in place. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna un Furl this. And now you're going to wrap it around this thread going on. We're going to wrap it around here. We're going to get somewhat of a, an even spacing on it as we go, which is sometimes harder than it looks. So all we're doing is just making slow increments of, of rotating this around it. So you get all the way around. So once I come all the way around, I've got it to this point. Now you're just gonna tuck it under. You're gonna go all the way around a couple of times. And then to get the opposite, 
I didn't get these real even, but the opposite would be to come back to where we started. And this one, instead of going to the over the top here, we come to the inside. So I'm gonna pop that to there. And now I'm gonna spiral this around. I wanna follow whatever's on that side to make it look the same. And you can see the, I call this a baseball stitch or whatever you wanna call it, but it, it, it looks pretty cool. So this is another way of doing them. And with the olive branch, they just add a single one in the center and, and wrap around it and kind of make everything together. Then when you get to this end, this is the one that's a little trickier. So I pull it to this end, but this I'm gonna make that little loop right there and just kind of keep it on this side. And I'm gonna get a couple of threads over top of it. Then once it comes back up here, I'll put my finger on here so I don't pull it too far. And I'll pull this loop back out of there. And so that way when I finish up, everything stays together and it stays where it's supposed to. Let's see if I can get this to look good. Not my best work, but uh, you get the idea. This is what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do the nail knot, which we, we've uh, came up with a little better way of tying it, makes it a little easier. Uh, again, there's many ways of tying the same knot. Whatever works the best for you. If it takes a straw method to do it, then use the straw method. Um, but you're gonna take 30 inches of, of material. I'm using nylon here, so it shows up real easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the short end here, I'm gonna hold it in three fingers, come across my thumb and my forefinger and hold on to it. I'm gonna take the other end of it, put it around the rod blank. I'm gonna lift my thumb up and put my finger on top. So you can see that there's the X right there that we're working on. Everything that I do, I'm working towards the palm of my hand. I'm making loops. I'm gonna lift my thumb up each time I come around. And I wanna do five. And the reason that we do five is because Kurt said so. If you do six, sometimes they don't pull down all the way. They get tangled, it makes it tough for you to get them out. If you do um, less than, than five, they come apart when you try to cut them. So five seem to be our lucky number for getting everybody to have success at this. So once I've held it here, I've got it held, I'm gonna point my finger straight down at the table. I'm gonna take the longer end here, and I'm gonna drop it through the big hole. There's a big hole that's right here. You wanna make sure that you get it through the middle of it, not, not through the sides. Once I get it there now, there's my nail knot right there. I just slide my finger out and slide this down. And then you push it up where you want it to go. And then you'll cinch this up and down a couple of times. You might have to go around once if you got loops and stuff, go around once, get those out. And then I pull at two o'clock and eight o'clock. Not super tight, but just enough to hold it. So with a thread, I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna use this razor blade and I'm just gonna do a plunge cut on this side. On this side here, I've used a thread down here. So this is D up here. I can lay this on top of that D and trim that off. And now I've got a band on the outside. Now, if you have trouble with that, again, thread preserver, great product. I put that, you can tie this knot, leave the ends on it, put your thread preserver on that, let that dry, then come back and trim those ends off. And even if you cut the thread, it won't fall apart. It'll stay together.